Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. Earth geology is primarily a study of incremental processes over eons of time. Volcanoes, earthquakes, weathering and erosion are the forces that geologists theorize of having shaped our planet's landforms and surfaces. But the Electric Universe is opening new theoretical pathways for understanding our Earth and all planets and moons. In the Electric Universe theory, as proposed by the chief principles of the Thunderbolts project, in a relatively recent period of chaos in the inner solar system, interplanetary electrical discharges shape the surfaces of the planets, including the Earth. What evidence do we see of these events on our planet? In this episode, Thunderbolt's colleague Andrew Hall begins the first of a three-part presentation on the revolutionary concepts of electric universe geology. One of the most compelling aspects of electric universe cosmology is that it is visually apparent. A person can compare the image of a Parat column to a petroglyph and reasonably conclude our ancestors viewed a different sky than we do. Or look at the image of planetary nebula and recognize the hourglass shape of plasma currents contracting to form a star. In fact, through electric universe eyes, one can see the patterns in nature from galactic to nuclear are coherent, fractal, and electric. The planets and moons of our own solar system provide some of the most accessible and compelling visual evidence of all. Hexagonal craters, rim craters, rills, and volcanoes, often concentrated near the poles or in one hemisphere, attest to an electrical formation. One can imagine the vortex of discharging plasmatic carbon. Earth also shows electric scarring. In an electric universe, it has to be the case, but it's not intuitively apparent. Unlike the Moon or Mercury, Earth doesn't display a carpet of hexagonal craters. There are some craters we know that are ancient and eroded, but their formation remains controversial. There does exist proof of electrical scarring on Earth, however, and it's in abundance. You can say it's staring us in the face, and I'm going to show you how to recognize it. The evidence is in the mountains. Basin and range, mountain arcs, and mountain cordilleras are all proof of electrical discharge. To understand the evidence, however, requires looking beyond the simple concept of a lightning bolt from space. The reason is the Earth's atmosphere. When electrical discharge occurs in an atmosphere, it creates sonic hydrodynamic effects. We experience the effect when we hear thunder, the sonic boom of a lightning bolt. It's the sonic and hydrodynamic effects in a dense, viscous atmosphere that leave their mark on the landscape at the grandest scale. In a previous Thunderblog article titled Surface Conductive Faults, I presented the concept of a surface conductive double layer providing a path for arc flash. The surface conductive path is the cloud layer where we can see that ions collect to produce thunderstorms. Imagine now a lightning bolt of immense proportions, sheets of lightning in fact, arcing through the atmosphere. The focus of our discussion today is the hydrodynamic effects of the resulting arc blast. Arc blast is the consequence of arc flash in a surface conductive current discharge. We'll now look at the recipe for a mountain. This image from Los Alamos Laboratories shows a shock wave created by a supersonic projectile passing over water. The colors display density highest in the red, lowest in the blue. Purple is the baseline density of the atmosphere. This image provides a very good analogy for the way a mountain is built. The result of an arc's passing is embossed on the land by shock waves that act almost precisely as those made by this projectile. The difference being the shock wave is plowing land, not water, and it has the hypersonic velocity, heat, and power of an arcing current, much more energy than a simple projectile. The bow shock is an anvil of many tons per square inch at a temperature many times that of the sun, 30 to 40,000 degrees Fahrenheit, carrying charged electric fields. In a dense, 
viscous environment, fluid mechanics, shock effects, and electromagnetism align in phase and frequency with the arc that creates them, meaning the resulting shock wave carries not only extreme pressure and density, but also heat, electric current, and magnetic fields. Looking at the picture, in region one, the bow shock plows the land, melting and vaporizing the rocket impacts. Region two, is a reflection of the shock wave as it rebounds from the surface and blasts into the atmosphere. It creates a low pressure zone in its wake, drawing an exploding cloud of vaporized debris into a richmeyer meshkoff instability, more commonly known as a mushroom cloud. The cloud is not shown in the projectile over water because that simulation did not involve the explosive effects of expanding gases heated instantaneously by an arc flash. In region three, a low pressure updraft forms, like the rooster tail behind a speedboat. The rooster tail pulls a bladed melt from the crater, and this is what forms the core of a mountain. In region four, shock reflections form triangular waveforms that trail behind the projectile. Note the reflected wave bounces from the surface. So the base of the triangular waveform forms on the surface that reflects it. This is worth remembering. The multiple shock reflections in region four are standing waves. Standing waves don't travel. The waveform stays in place with the energy coursing through it. Reflected waves multiply like reflections in a hall of mirrors, repeating harmonic triangular waves to the nth degree until the energy of the shock dissipates. We'll talk more about the reflected shock waves in a moment. Now, let's go back to region two, where the initial shock reflection develops the mushroom cloud. The mushroom cloud rises behind the shock wave with a supersonic vacuum at its core. You have likely seen video of a nuclear test explosion. The mushroom cloud forms in the wake of the rebounding shock and develops a powerful updraft in the stem of the mushroom. That is the effect we are talking about. A simulation of such an event is portrayed in a video by Dr. Mark Boswell of Sandia Labs, and we provide a link to his video accompanying the Space News. Dr. Boswell's insight is based on his study of airburst meteors like Chelyabinsk and Tunguska, but the physics of a plasma bolide from a meteor airburst and that of an arc flash that I'm describing are much the same. The updraft of expanding gases generates supersonic inflowing ground winds that scream across the ablated surface of the blast zone, funneling to the core of the updraft, dragging clouds of molten rock and dust. Realize that the most violent tornadoes measure winds approaching 300 miles per hour. These winds would be supersonic, more than twice that fast. The ground winds are directed perpendicular to the primary shock wave. Keep this in mind because it is also important evidence in the sacred geometry of mountains. The reflected shock waves are rigid and stable when the energy is high, creating a shock envelope over the ablated land. The energy does not dissipate quickly because the mushroom cloud is punching a hole through the atmosphere, drawing supersonic winds through the shock envelope like a cosmic vacuum cleaner. This updraft is a source of free energy to the shock wave that keeps it alive. Shock waves are highly energetic. They are razor thin sheets of pure energy. Entire tsunamis packed in a wave as thin as a sheet of glass, resonating with energy that derives from the original bow shock. The entire envelope of reflected waves acts as a coherent system with structural stiffness resonating with the vibrations of the parent shock and the supersonic wind screaming through it. The reflected shock waves are like walls to the incoming winds, creating triangular plenums that channel the flow. And the winds plaster the mountain core with layered triangular buttresses. Here are some examples. These images are from Google Earth. Examination of the coherent orientation of waveforms dispels any notion they were made by random wind and rain over the eons. The non-random radial orientation of waveforms is impossible to explain 
except as a result of a single shock event that produced winds unlike anything we experience today. Note in this picture not only the back row of triangular waveforms, but also the large triangular buttress in the lower right foreground, formed by resonant waveforms that were closer to the blast. Shock reflections form at 90 degrees to the path of the shock wave that made them, so they emanate radially from the impact. The vector, the supersonic wind flow, which layers the buttress in place. Therefore, wind direction is perpendicular to the stratified layers of the buttress and can easily be determined. In this example, the triangular buttresses are parallel to each other, yet at an angle to the core of the mountain they were blown against because the triangular faces were created perpendicular to the wind. Proof these were caused by winds is evident here where one ridge of buttresses is in the shadow of a ridge line in the foreground. It is obvious how the ridge is interrupted or canceled because the interference to the flow of the ground winds. The layered material on buttresses is deposited in a hot molten state. Patterns of deposition display evidence of molten fluidity at the time they were made. Wind layering and the effect of electricity is evident here where it is clear the winds deposited the buttresses in sorted layers, sorted by the material's dielectric properties. A bladed material also shaped by high-speed, highly directional winds surround the blast zones. Here is another image of ejecta, showing a classic butterfly pattern in Utah. Pressure ridges form perpendicular to the wind direction around the blast zone. They are also composed of layered and sorted deposits. Now that we've seen the features they produce, let's talk more about reflected shock waves. Supersonic shock waves display particular behaviors that have been studied by aerospace engineers since the beginning of the jet age. These characteristics must be understood to design airplanes, missiles, and rockets. We know a great deal about their behavior. The angle that the initial shock wave makes is directly related to the Mach speed of the wave, so it is called the Mach angle. Hence, the Mach angle holds information on the speed of the shock wave that made it. The triangular reflected wave is an inevitability of supersonic flow. It forms when the initial shock wave hits a surface and reflects. The reflected wave will have an equal but opposite angle incident to the surface from the shock wave that made it, assuming the plane of the surface and trajectory of the wave front are parallel. When the incident angle between the shock trajectory and the reflecting surface change, more reflected waves are created in predictable ways. Hence, the reflected angle holds information on the trajectory of the shock wave that made it. The amplitude and wavelength of the reflected waves diminish over time as the energy dissipates. Hence, reflected waves hold information on the energy of the event that made them. The shock wave travels on a transverse carrier wave called the propagating wave. This vibrates the land seismically from the hammer blow of the shock. The land will reflect some of the shock and absorb some of the shock as a function of its modulus of elasticity. Hard rock will reflect better than sandstone because the sandstone will absorb much more of the shock. Here, a hard surface creates sharply defined triangles. Soft and uneven surfaces will modify the waveform. This contributes to the variety of waveforms we see, sometimes appearing rounded and melty looking like these sandy formations in Namibia. Supersonic shock waves are longitudinal waves. Instead of vibrating up and down in a sinusoidal vibration, longitudinal waves compress and expand back and forth like an accordion. Transverse waves, like the propagating wave that the shock travels on, travel up and down. The result is longitudinal and transverse wave superpositioning. Except, if created by an arcing current overhead, the wave is, that we show here is inverted, with the fixed boundary above fixed to the point in space the shock originated from, and wave motion amplified near the ground. 
This static image in pink shows the standing waveform that results. Compression results in a higher frequency of small amplitude short wavelengths, and expansion results in low frequency high amplitude long wavelengths. Triangular buttresses are the molded product of these shock waves. Frozen in time, the supersonic winds fuse them in place on the mountain core. Let's take a look at a few. This mountain shows waveforms expanding and tracting on its flanks. This is a mountain in China, as does this range of mountains in Argentina. As the frequency of waveforms change, the amplitude and wavelength change inversely. This one demonstrates expanding waveforms as they rise and fall over the surface and round the end of the mountain. Here is an example of low frequency, low amplitude waveforms contracting. And this overhead view shows an example of the footprint of the hill expanding. In other words, expansion occurs in the x direction as well as the y. Just look at the ruler straight ridge line down the center. Many more characteristics of hydrodynamic and electromagnetic effects are evident on the landscape. It's a big subject, rewriting the science of geology. So we'll just take it a few bites at a time and continue the discussion in later space news. Let's recap what we have seen so far. Triangular buttresses form on the sides of mountains in the shape of reflected supersonic shock waves. Triangular waveforms are parallel to the primary shock pattern consistent with reflected shock waves. Triangular waveforms are perpendicular to the wind direction consistent with supersonic winds created by a shock event. They are layered onto the mountain so they are not caused by seismic waves. They are not layered sediments from an ancient beach or waterway since the sharply angled triangles do not conform to any motion of random water waves. The blast zones show concentric rings of pressure ridges layered in the direction of the winds. They are formed in all types of rock, including granite, so they are not formed by eons of normal winds. The triangular waveforms exhibit less energy and more transient effects on softer substrates and higher energy and sharper, more defined angles on hard substrates. Land surrounding the blast zone is blanketed with ejecta that exhibit flow patterns from high-speed winds. The triangular waveforms exhibit compression and expansion from superimposed longitudinal and transverse waves that could only have come from above. In the future, we'll continue the discussion and we'll explore more. How the waveforms exhibit harmonic repetition consistent with reflected shock waves. How they exhibit superpositioning and cancellation under compression consistent with reflected shock waves. And how waveforms exhibit transient reflections, normal shocks, and features of density variation consistent with supersonic reflected shock waves. We'll look at material layering at the mountain core pressure ridges and buttresses, boundary layer features of reflected waves that are found in the substrate of the blast zone, the rooster tail and how big mountains are built, following winds and how Kelvin Hemholtz instability can modify a mountain ridge, the cause and nature of an arc flash, subsea canyons, trenches and rifts, and examples from archaeology and mythology that are a record of mankind witnessing some of these events. What is proposed here can be verified. In fact, mountains are the most tangible evidence for the electric universe model available. The evidence is under our feet. There are already reams of geologic data waiting to be reinterpreted. Geophysics applied to evaluate geology as a consequence of electro and hydrodynamic forces will someday bear this out. You may even have the ability to bring that day closer. Your comments are welcome. Thank you. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.